Hello, my name is Kyan Connor. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and associate professor of mental health law and policy at the University of South Florida. I got my MSW and PhD in social work from the University of Pittsburgh, as well as a master's in public health with a specialization in minority health and health disparities. Currently, I am the vice president of the National Alliance on Mental Illness for the state of Florida and my work focuses on understanding behavioral health disparities facing racial and ethnic minority populations and to develop, modify, and assess empirically supported interventions which can mitigate those disparities. I am a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Alpha Kappa Alpha is the first historically African-American Greek lettered sorority founded on January 15, 1908 at Howard University. Alpha Kappa Alpha is one of the nation's largest Greek letter organizations serving through a membership of more than 300,000 women in over 1,000 chapters in the United States and around the world. The motto of AKA is by culture and by merit and the focus is on service and giving back to the community. Of course, when people think about sororities, they think about parties and stepping, and that's part of it, but it's a small part. Since the organization's establishment, Alpha Kappa Alpha has helped to improve social and economic conditions through its vast array of community service programs. We work with communities through service initiatives and progressive programs related to education, family, health, behavioral health, and business. Having the support and sisterhood of Alpha Kappa Alpha while I completed my degrees at the University of Pittsburgh, a predominantly white institution, was incredibly valuable. And as a professional in the field, I am part of a sisterhood of college-educated, service-minded, social justice advocates that I can call upon at any time, no matter where I am in the world. And that is a very powerful feeling. Forming this sorority broke barriers for African-American women in areas where they had little power or authority due to lack of opportunities for racial and ethnic minorities and women. So to watch my sorority sister, Kamala Harris, be inaugurated as the first woman and the first black woman as vice president of the United States is a feeling of happiness, joy, and pride that is incapable of being measured. Another thing I'm feeling right now is optimism and hope, something I've not felt in a number of years and something that could not have come at a more critical time, a time when the United States is grappling with its history of systematic racism, protests against police brutality, a racial and political divide that seems to grow daily, all playing out for us to see. This is a critical time in our history and to see Kamala Harris take her oath as our next VP gives me hope, hope that we can begin to repair the legacies of historical trauma and current race-based traumas. Hope that we can begin to work on repairing the racial and political divide in this country. My mental health has improved over the past week in many respects due to this renewed sense of optimism and hope. And I'm sure many of us can relate to that feeling but especially to young black and brown girls out there who can look at Kamala Harris and once again believe that they matter. They are magic and they can be anything they want to be. But the fight is not over. We still have a long way to go. One of the issues I have been most concerned about recently is the mental health status of black and brown communities in the United States. This past year has been one of great traumas and we are seeing spikes in mental illness, unhealthy coping strategies and psychological distress in all Americans, but particularly in the black community. Via an award received through the USF sponsored call for research projects focused on understanding blackness and anti-black racism. I'm currently the lead investigator for a project entitled Storytelling Saves Lives, challenging the stigma of mental illness through stories from the black community. One in five American adults face mental health challenges. However, the conversation around mental illness continues to carry stigma and shame. And many people who deal with mental health challenges remain silent. This can be particularly true in racial and ethnic minority communities where talking about mental illness is often seen as taboo 
and there are cultural norms which encourage individuals and families to keep mental health challenges private frequently leading to people not seeking help when they truly need it and isolating those in our community who need help the most. And in fact, African-Americans are less than half as likely as their non-Hispanic white counterparts to seek professional mental health services. In the black community, there is a strong need to address this issue, especially now in a time when race-based trauma experienced personally or vicariously is impacting the mental health of our community. Right now, critical conversations regarding the mental health and wellness of African Americans are being brought to the surface, providing an opportunity to change the narrative about mental health. It is in this effort to take advantage of a really unique time in our history that we're partnering with This Is My Brave Incorporated to deliver and evaluate a special series titled This Is My Brave Stories from the Black Community. And this virtual series will shine a light on and amplify the voices of Black Americans living with mental illness and or addictive disorders who bravely share their experiences with illness and treatment, as well as messages of hope and recovery with the goal of reducing stigma and encouraging critical conversations about Black mental health. Importantly, storytelling is a culturally sanctioned strategy and has always been a cornerstone for information sharing within the Black community. Throughout our history, we had shared stories of our successes, oppression, injustices, tragedies, celebrations, and traditions, and we have found healing in expressing ourselves in song, dance, comedy, art, and spoken word. We have learned that our stories are powerful and are critical to our existence. We believe that sharing stories can be therapeutic for the viewers who watch them and can enhance the healing and recovery for those who share them. Ultimately, it is our hope that members of the Black community will watch this series, which can be viewed online at thisismybrave.org, and that they will see themselves in the stories shared on the screen, and that through that connection and contact with someone who looks like them from their community, bravely sharing their experiences with a mental illness or addictive disorder, that viewers will experience a change in their own perception of mental illness, their attitudes about seeking treatment, and will feel encouraged to talk about their own experiences and share their stories. We believe this kind of movement can truly change the narrative around help seeking in the Black community, proximally leading to reduced shame and stigma associated with mental illness, an improvement in attitudes towards seeking treatment, and ultimately saving lives. Thank you so much.